Silvertone in 1964. It's on the cover of Castanets, actually. I'll give you one of those. I just graduated from the eighth grade and I got my first electric guitar and it was from my grandmother. It was very nice of her to buy me one. And um, it was from the Sears in Holyoke. They, they didn't make them, but other people made them for me. But um, and the Sears was right next to the housing project I grew up in. Uncannily, there was a Sears right next to my house. So we would go in there like five days a week, my buddies and I, and look at guitars and we would smell them too. <laughs> you would smell the guitars? <laughs> Kind of like shoes. <laughs> no, really, because the cases and the guitars have a certain smell to them. Well, this is in the 60s. I'm sure they still do. But you know, back then, it was like magical because you know, we didn't have instruments. And we'd go in there and look at the salesmen loved us because they knew we couldn't afford to buy a pick. You know? <laughs> but, so your um, grandmother so bought you one? After the eighth grade, she knew I wanted one, and she bought me the silver tone that's on the cover of Cask and Nets. You know, 69.95, brand new. <clears throat> so I had that one for a while, and then. This one I got in 1980. It's a 1965 silver tone, but I bought it in 1980 off a friend of mine who basically was in the corner of his apartment in Northampton, and like people would be on it at three in the morning at parties. You know, hey, that guitar. Yeah, yeah. Oh wow! And it was pounded in a note case, and uh, I was in the laundromat on Masonic Street next to Packard's way back in 1980. I used to think that wasn't that long ago, but now it's. <laughs> I don't think you know, bulletin ago. boards. There's bulletin boards in the laundromat all the time. There's a sign there that goes guitar for sale. <clears throat> and I look at the phone number. It didn't have a name on it, but and it was his phone number. I'm like, geez, you know, what if it could be that silver tone? It's uh, in the corner, you know. And I called him. His name was Scott. And um, he goes, yeah, yeah, it is Ray, yeah. I'll bring it over. You want to try it out? Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, my father bought it for me way back, you know, a long time ago when I was younger, but I didn't even want to play guitar. Just, so I never used it, so it's been in the corner. People play it. I said, yeah, yeah, I know. I've been over there enough times, but um, he drives it over on his bike, no case. He's got a bicycle. He's got it strapped around his back with a piece of rope, like a cord, you know, no shoulder strap. It's just two pieces of cord tied in. And he, I, he says, I'll be right over. He comes, shows up on his bike with it over his back. Oh my God. Hey, here it is. Okay. So I had an amp, that same amp, and uh, plugged it in, worked like a charm. You know? He says, Wow, it works. It sounds pretty good. I said, Yeah, yeah. He says, Well, I'm selling it. So I said, Okay, well, how much you want for it? He said, It's 20 bucks too much. And I said, I got that. <laughs> it wasn't like I was rich either, but I think, you know, 20 bucks. Yeah. He was pleased, I was pleased. There's was the 20, beautiful, done deal. Wow. And so there it was, you know. And since then, though, I, I have another one just like it at home, in a, the original carrying bag, turquoise carrying bag, that a woman named Diana Davies, she's a photographer, she had found it at a yard sale in Portland, Maine, one day, and I was playing Sunday night at a place called The Brewery in Northampton, way back when they used to have music on and she, she came she came back to Northampton, she came in the club during my break, she says, hey Ray, I'm bringing something in to you see, I bought this in Maine today, I thought of you. She brings it in, there it is, mint shape, same guitar, 1965, but brand new, mint shape, with the wow. carrying bag. She said, I bought this at a yard sale in Portland this afternoon, and she said, uh, 50 bucks I paid for it, I mean, I'll sell it to you for 50 if you want it, she said, I thought of you, so, Jeez, yeah, yeah. You know, I think I had to borrow some money out. People I knew there, I said, yeah, 50, 50 bucks. Now I got another one at home. It needs a little, like, it needs a new bridge, because the, the original bridges are really, like, balls of wood. They really move around too much. But it's in mint shape. It's right in the corner in my record room. So you, do you use one. different ones as a backup? No, I do have a spare old K guitar, which is another 1960s beat up old guitar that I use for spare on certain gigs when I think I need a spare, maybe, if I'm playing a 30 minute set, like at the Iron Horse or somewhere, or Bridge Street. But I rarely ever break a string. Not very much. So these are pretty new strings. But, um, so yeah, I have that spare guitar, though, just like that sitting there. So I don't know. And I have other assorted silver tones that people give me. They don't want them, and they go, oh, that's great if he wants that. And I think you're a collector. I'm not a collector. No, I don't have But a they're tone. making you a collector. There's little parts of them. There's <laughs> even one, somebody gave me the body of a silver tone and the neck of a silver tone. Huh. Disconnected. So you keep rebuilding it? No, I don't know how to rebuild it. But I, I just have parts, you know. I have, like, a silver tone there. I have one like that. I have another K. I have a... 
another old beat up silver tone that a guy named Dave gave me. My buddy Dave Boatwright was his first guitar and he gave it to me. He was getting rid of it. Sometimes people want to get rid of stuff and they're not really trying to sell it. They just want to give it to somebody they think might enjoy it. And right. Yeah, I've given away things all my life like that, you know. My old train set that I actually picked up when I was a kid. I loved those and yet I gave it to my buddy's son way back in the 1970s, you know, because the kid had nothing. He loved trains. I gave him my old line on train set. Because then years later, someone goes, Hey, whatever happened to your train set? You know? Because <laughs> they gave it to my nephew later. <laughs> oh, I gave that to the, what's his name, son there around the corner. As long as he well, enjoys it, nice. though. Who knows whatever happened to things? Once you let them go, you let them go. They're probably so.